Hello, welcome to this presentation, Java in a World of Containers. I'm Paul Sandoz. I'm a member of the Java platform team, and I hack on uh, the cool libraries, uh, Java language, and Hotspot. So let's get into this presentation. OK, the agenda have a day is just two things. One, I'm going to talk about running um, JDK 9 in Docker containers. Uh, the second part is I'm going to be reducing the size of JDK 9 in Docker images. So I'm going to present some slides, and I'm also going to present some demos on these two aspects. Before I get into that, I'd just like to point out that Java 8 Docker images are available uh, for download. You can see the links here if you want to try those out. So let's get into the first part of the presentation, running JDK 9 in Docker containers. So we've, we've done a bunch of improvements in uh, JDK 9 to honor resource constraints in uh, Docker. When you run a Docker container, it can be constrained in terms of memory and uh, how many CPUs it have. So the first one we, we respect now is uh, C group memory limits that have been set by the container. Um, and we've added an experimental flag here. Uh, you can see use C group memory limit for heap. This is experimental at the moment, and we hope that you'll be able to get experience running this, and then we will switch it over to a, um, a default setting later on when we're comfortable we got this right. Um, another area that um, the JDK now respects is uh, some CPU constraints set for the container. For example, um, the runtime available processors will now report the correct number of CPUs in the container. Previously, it used to report the, the CPUs of the host itself. And also, we've done um, some fixes to the JVM to make it more stable when resources change. For example, the G1 uh, garbage collector now operates on active CPU count discovered at JVM startup and not the active CPU count at any time it decides it wants to query it so, because G1 needs to size stuff at JVM startup correctly based on CPU count it sees. And ongoing improvements are planned for a future release. Um, we have a draft JEP in the works, um, container aware Java, and we would plan to do a number of enhancements here, for example, evaluating further support for Docker runtime flags you see there for CPU quotes in this. So there's a lot of work we can do here to improve how Java works. But now I'm going to switch to a little demo here and show the, the resource constraints in action. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a Java process in a Docker container, a Docker image, sorry, containing Java 9 build. And I'm going to run JShell as the Java process. So let's just go ahead and, and, and run that. So what I'm doing is I'm running JShell in a Docker container. It's running Java 9. And we're going to query the, uh, the, the CPU constraint, CPU limits and memory limits to see what's offered. So first of all, I'm running Docker without any constraints. It's just going to run what the defaults are and, and what the host offers up to it. So we using the runtime get um, available processors we can see that we it reports those four processes available by default. I've also added some snippets to JShell to query the, the memory limits of both the, the Java runtime and also what's reported by um, the C groups. And in, in the second case, we see I'm, load, I'm loading up a file here which contains the, the, the limit in terms of memory that the Docker container has here. So remember, I'm running JShell in a container here. So if we run uh, the system memory limit, let's see, what, uh, let's see what it offers. And it reports it back in megabytes here. So that's a, that's a huge number. Basically, it's saying Docker container is saying, I don't care. I, whatever the host offers me, I will try and use up as much as possible. If we look at the, the, the Java limit here for max memory, what we have is we is, is selecting a 500 megabyte default here. So that's with no um, limits whatsoever set. So if we switch back and we run our container, and instead what we're going to do is we're going to limit the Docker container to 384 megabytes and limit it so that it, it only, it's pinned to CPU zero, so basically one CPU. So let's see what happens when we run that. Again, it's running JShell in a container here. And let's get the available processors. Now we are only uh, have one processor available compared to four before because we set the uh, restricted the number of CPUs, so that's working correctly. Now let's just check the uh, system max memory. We see it's 384 because we limited it in the our command here like so. Now let's check the Java memory limits here. 
you see, well, we see that Java is ignoring that constraint in Docker, and it's actually trying to grab more memory than is available in the container. Now, when Java tries to allocate more memory like this, it, I think it depends on the policy of uh, how you run your Docker containers, whether the Java process is killed or not as soon as it runs out of memory and swap. So how do we fix this? So we can use the options that I showed earlier, the experimental options that we pass into Hotspot. Now you notice they're, they're um, expressed twice here because of the, um, the way the implementation specifics of JShell, it actually runs two Java processes, one for the REPL and one for executing the Java snippets that we, we typed in. So let's run that and see what, how that behaves. Okay, let's get the system memory here. It should be free for before. And let's get the uh, Java Max memory here. And we see that it's down to a 121 megabytes, about a third. So it's doing the right thing here. It's trying to choose reasonable defaults of memory uses based on the, the max memory constraints of the container itself. So you can, you can use these options. You have to um, add uh, an experimental flag first before you apply the option here to use. And we'd be interested in feedback of how this works for you when running Java in containers. Okay, back to the second part of my presentation. So the second part of the presentation is reducing the size of JDK9 in Docker images. So JDK9 is modular, thanks to Project Jigsaw. That's the, the major release driver of JDK9. And JDK9 introduces modules to the Java platform. So what is a module? A module is a set of packages designed for reuse, a very simple definition. And modules improve the reliability and maintainability of your programs. And we've applied modules to JDK9. It is itself composed of 79 modules. We've refactored the whole JDK over a number of years, and it, now we find it more reliable and maintainable itself as well. JDK9 comes with JLink, um, and this is a very interesting tool that you can use to create custom Java runtimes. For example, a Java runtime just consisting of the Java base module, that is the module that all other modules depend on. So what we can do is we can use a distribution called Alpine Linux, and we can use the work done by the OpenJDK project Portola to provide a port of the JDK to Alpine Linux. And specifically, it's to the Muscle C library that Alpine Linux uses. Now, Alpine Linux is interesting because it's a very small distribution. And it uses Muscle C rather than libc to reduce the size of the distribution. Now, early access builds of the JDK port to Alpine Linux are available at the, at the link there in the slides. And we can use JLink to create custom Java runtimes for Alpine Linux. And because Alpine Linux is small and we can create smaller custom Java runtimes, it adds for a smaller Docker image. So I'm going to explain how we can do that. So first of all, I used a, um, when I was running JShell before, I was using a pre-existing image I created called JDK9 Alpine. So that was JDK9 on Alpine Linux, a full JDK there. If we, if we list our uh, images here, we can see I have two images in my Docker registry locally. I have Alpine Linux, which is all of about four meg, and I have JDK9 Alpine latest, which is 356 megabytes. So basically the whole JDK is about 350 megabytes in, in total. So how did I create that JDK9 image? So I have a, um, a Docker file available like so, and I want to build a Docker image from that Docker file. So what I did was I'm building from Alpine Linux, the Docker image, the base image, and I'm adding an EA version of JDK9 for Alpine Linux here that I previously downloaded. And I'm basically copying that into the image and setting up some environment variables. And I can actually rebuild that image just to show how it works like so. Um, it's, it's a bit faster because I've already built it and cached it and haven't changed anything. So there's, there's, there's really no change going on here. So what I can do is I can run this and show how many modules are in the JDK, full JDK9 runtime by running, doing a Docker run command and running Java and listing the modules. And we should see there's quite a lot of modules here in the full JDK. In fact, if we just uh, do a quick count of them, 
we should see there is 79 modules in the JDK and you can if we just scroll through and have a look we see there's Java desktop Java Corba here now when you're running an say a cloud-based application you you probably don't need desktop and you probably don't need Corba and you probably don't need uh, JDK AOT perhaps or the um, Java doc and stuff like this so you can strip down your um, your applications just to use the, the JDK modules that you that you require. So let's let's try and strip it down to the smallest possible Java runtime. And we, what we're going to do is we're going to pick the Java base module, the one that all other modules depend on. So how are we going to do that? So I have another Docker file. So first of all, we need to run JLink, uh, the tool I described earlier, and we need to run JLink in the container of uh, JDK 9 Alpine Linux, and I already have a script for this. So what this is going to do, it's going to run my uh, JDK 9 Alpine container, and it's going to run JLink within that container, set up my module path to the, the, the Java modules in the JDK 9 runtime, and it's going to say, I only want to build a new Java runtime that contains the Java base module. I'm going to make it smaller by compressing it. I'm going to remove some header files I don't need. And then I'm going to output it to this directory here, like so. So let's just run this. Like so. While that's running, I'm just going to save some time and copy this command here. So it's now doing JLink running within the Docker container, a bit like how we run ran JShell. And now it's we should see there's a directory here that we created here. So that's, a, that's a, a custom runtime for Alpine Linux that we just created, which is smaller. So how do we put that into a Docker file? So I have a Docker image. So I have another Docker file that we can use to create that Docker image, which is very similar to the other one. We just basically take a, a custom runtime that we built and copy it into the right location and set up some environment variables. So let's just uh, build that. So now it's going to do some actual work here. I'll copy this command line while we're waiting here. So it's copying the directory. That's the Java runtime, the custom Java runtime image is containing Java base into the into the container, setting up the environment variables, and now it's creating the the, the Docker image. And if we look at our images here, we can see that that our custom runtime has reduced by an order of magnitude compared to the full um, JDK 9 runtime here. And that, that's in part because Alpine Linux is so small as well. We get the benefits of the small custom runtime there and the small um, size of the operating system. So now we can list our modules in there and we see we only have Java base. There. So that is an example of how you can create small custom runtime images. All of the uh, commands and the Docker files and the scripts that I've run and used are available at the end of this presentation. Um, so you can, you can try this out for yourself. So let's go back to the presentation just finally at the end. So just to review, I showed how Java is improving its execution or, or running within uh, Docker containers and how you can reduce the size of JDK 9 in Docker images. And so next steps, you can go to download the JDK from the links here. You can join the Open JDK mailing list and you can follow us on Twitter. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much.